Firstly, uh, I, I was on duty that day. Oh. Uh, that was just a typical lightning strike, to right, be honest right, right, with you. Right, right. Yeah, it just so happened to have hit the ground and it was captured on camera. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Unlike Me Bits. I will be meeting someone who can predict the weather of Singapore even at night. We are at the Meteorological Service Singapore and we will see if I can predict the weather myself. Avesta! Hi. Yeah, tell us a bit more about what you do. Right. Hi everyone, I'm Avesta and I'm from the Meteorological Service Singapore. Okay, Avesta, I've been told right by my producer that just by looking at the clouds, right, you'll be able to tell us about the weather. So tell us what do you see? Yeah, sure thing. So uh, this direction, we are facing west towards yes. the city from Changi Airport. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And right now, uh, in the evening sky, we can see uh, a lot of alto, uh, alto cumulus and right. alto stratus so clouds. all of this is same? Uh, most of it is indeed right, right, same. Right. Uh, you can see that they are about the same uh, height in the atmosphere. Ah, right. okay, and they have okay. a very flattened appearance. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So John, can you see the sunset? Yeah, very nice. All these years of playing game until the wee hours of the morning. What is night shift? Let's do this. Okay, so now we're in the MSS Central Forecast Office. Okay, and I do have a question for you, Vester. Right. It's gonna sound like a stupid question. Okay. But what is the role of a weather forecaster? Right, so a weather forecaster yeah. applies scientific concepts of meteorology uh -huh. to explain and understand current weather events. Yeah conduct analyses, and then predict future weather events. Besides the weather, we also monitor geophysical hazards such as earthquakes and tsunamis that could affect our surrounding region. So uh, satellites uh, give us a bird's eye view of mm. the surrounding areas. Yeah. So on this satellite image, uh, Singapore is actually positioned down here. Ah. And this is a satellite image of Southeast Asia. Right, 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 right. right, right. So uh, unlike um, visual, visual observations from where we are right now, yeah. um, satellite images you can only see it from top down. Mm. So there are some limitations to it. So the rise of global warming and climate change, right? Has forecasting the weather become a challenge these days? Uh, yes. So there's a scientific consensus that global warming makes extreme weather events more likely. Mm. We can expect more records to be broken. So we're talking about more intense rain days and right. more pronounced dry spells are more likely to occur. Has it already started to show this kind of pattern in Singapore? Uh, this is not an easy question to answer, but uh, Climate change requires decades worth of data. Right. We're talking about maybe 30 or 40 years of data to be consolidated mm -hmm. in order for us to form a conclusion. Okay, now it's time for a short break. Uh. Uh, so you can rest here uh, while I go on and prepare your next challenge. Okay, okay. Wow, it looks cozy, yeah? This is my favorite time. Break time. Uh, could be longer. Good morning. Good morning. Alright. So like, you are halfway through your shift. How do you find the experience so far? Halfway only? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I do have to say, from the start to where we are right now, right? There was the information was actually quite overwhelming, but thankfully, a vessel make it easier to understand. But I do get it now. I I feel that like now I have a deeper understanding and a deeper appreciation of what people at MSS do. And like as a result, like uh, I, I don't know, at minimum, I feel that I've learned to be less impatient with weather updates. Right, John. Yes. So we've prepared a little challenge for you. Okay. I hope you're excited. Can you guess what it's about? Um, I'm assuming it's probably going to have to do with what we learned just now and which... Oh! Read weather report, is it? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You know, I have to say, I've always been fascinated with news anchors and weathermen since I was a kid. So here's hoping I live up to my childhood dreams. <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got. Alright, let's go, let's go. Here at MSS, we do have our own filming studio. We have a green screen, so we do produce this to produce our episodic content online. This content is made to educate and inform members of the public about typical uh, weather and climate. We would like you to try uh, with a teleprompter to say a few words about the ah. weather. Okay, I will try my best. I mean, I'm no stranger to being in front of camera, right. so we're just hoping that that skill will translate. Of course, let's see how you go. Okay, although, although my, my dictation does need work.
A record low of 73.8% was set for the relative daily for the average daily relative humidity. The previous record low was 74.1% set in 2019. It was also the second windiest February on record with an average daily wind speed of 13.1 km per hour. This has been John for the Med Service Singapore. Oh, I always wanted to say that. <laughs>so personally i feel that i can be quite a generous person mm -hmm. so probably an 8 or even an 8.5 i would say that you pronounced all the words uh quite well yeah yeah there was a few start and stop moments um but overall it was quite well done i'm very impressed i have to say yeah. eight on my first day okay so avesta given your experience right because you've been around for four years right what are some of the more interesting things that you've encountered? Like for example, you know, recently I think there was this video, right, of the lightning striking somewhere and then people's dash cam then after that, wow, or something like that. Yeah, so uh, firstly, uh, I, I was on duty that day. Oh. Uh, that was just a typical lightning strike. To right, be right, 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 right. Yeah, it just so happened to have hit the ground and it was captured on camera. Then what, what, what other kinds of like interesting weather things that you have seen? Yeah, so personally, I've uh, witnessed the formation of a water spout. Right. So it's quite a weak water spout. Uh, it was about 8.30am on a thundery morning. And then from outside our office window, we can see the formation of a very low hanging cumulonimbus cloud. Right. And then uh, the tail of the water spout starts to form and then it descends from the main cloud itself. Yeah, but because it's quite weak, so it dissipated after a few minutes. Right. Yeah. Well, that one really sounds like the starting of a high uh, fantasy token uh, episode, right? The tail descent from the sky. So, uh, here's the thing, you know, I, I've always wondered, right, because like, um, with most jobs come different kinds of difficulties and I would guess night shift could potentially be one, right? So what makes you continue to strive to do your job? Being able to do my part to educate people young and old, as well mm. as to contribute to timely and reliable weather forecasts mm. for Singapore, uh, it does give me a sense of satisfaction. Right? So like that being said, right, you know, you do enjoy your job. Right? What is one thing that you wish the public would understand a little bit better about what you do? We have to be able to disseminate information uh, in a timely manner as well as make it accessible to the public. Mm. Whether it's like a volcanic eruption nearby, an right. earthquake, or even the fast development of a thunderstorm in the yeah. afternoon. Right, right, right. right. So all of these um, information must be disseminated out to the public. Ah. Yeah. And we have to do it in in a timely fashion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that people don't don't keep people guessing, right? Yeah. So I do want to emphasize that on the job there is a lot of decision making. Yeah. Uh, we don't just read off a computer screen. Ah. Yeah. So a lot of things happen very fast in split seconds. Yeah. Yeah, and we do have uh, very little room for error. So having done a, a full shift with you, right, and really, really, I have to say, being here at, at, at MSS, right, it really, really reinforced this intrigue and respect that I have for weather forecasters. So thank you so much, Avesta, for, for walking me yeah. through this journey. And uh, you know what, before we head off, I just got a really important question. Do you think it will rain later when I go home? Well, now that you have done a shift, uh, and I've explained to you many of the things, uh, would you like to make an educated forecast? Okay, so based on what you ran through with me today, I think it is not going to rain because firstly, uh, the sun is not present right now, so not, not likely to have much convection as a result. Uh, air and water don't get to rise as much in the middle of the night and also uh, based on the MSS homepage right you can check out the radar to see whether there are rain droplets in the air something like that that's a pretty good answer I would say yeah so we'll see if you're right not better huh? not better huh? <laughs> Through this fulfilling experience, I was able to understand the job scope of our weather forecasters and their unlikely bits. Join me next time to discover the unsung heroes of Singapore. Thank you for watching this episode of Unlikely Bits. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, ring the notification bells and watch more of our other videos over there. Bye!